to say uh, at the conclusion of our preseason schedule that uh, we're not quite as far along as I'd hoped. Uh, we need to improve uh, quickly as we head into conference uh, play. Uh, the disappointments have been uh, our defensive run uh, stopping, uh, third down efficiency, uh, and then also uh, offensively our I would say inconsistency in the throw game and also inconsistency on third down. Uh, those have uh, been the things that have plagued us. And so that will have to get better and get better fast as we get ready to uh, get into the meat of our schedule against uh, the very, very difficult Pac-12 conference. That being said, I do think there's reason for optimism. I still believe that we have the necessary uh, personnel on defense to uh, play and play effectively. Uh, we're going to work hard on uh, tackling and, and uh, uh, work hard on uh, making sure that we're where we're supposed to be. Oftentimes, as you look at the tape, our mistakes are that we're trying to do more than the defense calls for us to do. Uh, come out, coming out of coverage uh, because you want to make a play that really isn't your play. And uh, the discipline of our eyes has to increase. Uh, so we'll look forward to improving there and hopefully playing a, a great defensive game against uh, Oregon State. And then offensively, we, we're going to you know, make sure that our third down package is, is such that uh, we're going to get the great uh, precision in it, uh, not only from a protection standpoint, but also from a route running standpoint. And then the quarterback has to make the appropriate choice and throw the ball accurately. It's, it's not any one thing that's wrong. It's... It's uh, the inconsistencies that lie there. So we'll keep working uh, so that we can get up to being a 40 to 45 to 50 percent third down efficiency team, which is the hallmark of all the teams that are playing at the end of the year. So uh, I want uh, to make it clear that there's absolutely zero give up in our program. Uh, there's zero in the way of panic. Uh, we're going to go back to work and look forward to doing so uh, tomorrow and eager to get conference play underway in Corvallis, Oregon. Questions? You say you're, you're going to work hard on tackling. Does that mean you're going to go live some this week? Uh, we'll wait and see exactly how we do it, whether it's in drill work or, or actual. Uh, you know, the problem with going live tackling is you, you put your team at risk. Uh, and. Uh, while we certainly understand the need to do it and do it in, in uh, actual fashion, uh, lots of bodies around may not necessarily be uh, the, the right uh, recipe. So we'll, we'll uh, continue to talk about that. No. No. Live is something you do during training camp, and it's something you do... Uh, uh, during spring ball. You don't often go live during the course of seasons. I know uh, some teams do it and uh, uh, live to tell about it, but uh, that's not been uh, something that I've done in my career. And, I, and most guys that I talk to don't do it very often. You watch the NFL, they don't even wear pads. <laughs> you know, a, a great portion of their uh, practices. Uh, but, uh, and, the, and the reasons are, you know, they don't have as many roster guys. Uh, you know, they can't afford to have guys get hurt in practice. Do you feel more comfortable having a new quarterback at the beginning of the week and you don't have that? Uh, you know, the quarterback thing is, I, I said all along, I wanted one to separate himself, you know. Uh, and, and look forward to the day when we would have one. Uh, and Richard's got that opportunity now to, as the starter to, to keep it. And hopefully he'll play well enough that uh, he, he, can, uh, he can maintain the role. You know, Kevin's going to keep battling and keep working. And I know he'll be ready. He's a very, very bright guy and uh, struggled in the first quarter. That doesn't mean he's, you know, I'm giving up on it. But I, but I, I mean, it's, it's Richard's job right now. We'll see how he does. I'm excited for him. Where does Humley keep your lungs? You know, we're going to keep working, Brett, as we have. The, the disappointment with Brett is that, you know, we lost so much of the reps in fall camp and where you really have the luxury of reps. As you're not preparing for any particular game, uh, you get 
to get lots of reps and going back to the earlier question, lots of live reps and things of that thing where you can, uh, but, but Brett certainly brings something to the table that's intriguing, which is why he was so highly recruited and why uh, so many believe that uh, he's got a, a fantastic future, me included. So uh, we're gonna continue to work with him. I've told him I want his, his uh, attention and uh, I want his dedication to the preparation process to enhance. And that isn't because he hasn't been great up to date, but I want him to be preparing as if he were to play. And then we'll see where he is as we get later in the week and see if uh, there's a place for him in the, in the game plan. How far away do you think he is? Well, there's still some things that happen in the course of practice that can tell you that he didn't know that, that he would have been hot on that guy or he didn't know uh, that was the protection required here. And, and you know, that's not a knock on him. Most kids his age don't. You know, uh, I've unfortunately played guys in, in the, since I've been here that weren't ready uh, with everything that goes on. Uh, you're trying to remember what to do, where, what your footwork is, and all the different things that go on to any particular assignment on any particular play to manage a game at the same time and to remember, you know, protections and who you're hot on, all that kind of stuff is a lot. And, and, and not to mention your footwork to throw accurately. So uh, it's a complicated job, and, but, yeah, but I'm pleased with his progress, and we'll just wait and see exactly where he is as we get to the end of every week. And I'm also mindful, you know, I don't want to squander a year if, 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 uh, if we're not going to invest and in, he, he's not worth the investment because of where his maturity is with respect to the offense. You know, uh, if we want to be prudent there. As you, uh, as you prepare to start conference play, how do you, how do you uh, retrain the mindset to kind of forget about the poor start that you guys have? I don't think forget's the right work, word. I think uh, you always talk, and, and the goals of the program are always to try to win a championship. And you can't win a championship in the preseason in, in the non-conference games. But we certainly don't forget the games. We don't forget you know, the mistakes that were made and how to correct them. Uh, and uh, you, you, you take from those games everything you can and then emotionally invest heavily as you get forward for, uh, look forward to conference play. Are you expecting an answer on the waiver for Brandon Willis anytime soon? Uh, you know, I have to check where the documentation is. I know we were waiting some, uh, as late as, as, as recent as last week. We were still waiting on from some documentation from North Carolina. And so once that's all assembled, then it'll go, and then I don't know what the timetable is. I don't okay, know. so it hasn't been sent to the NCAA yet? I can check that for you, Tracy, and I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay. Uh, but I don't know that sitting here today. I know last week we were waiting on documentation. Well, we hope. That's option A, that Andrew will be available. Uh, we're fortunate that Andrew isn't, uh, isn't a serious, uh, as serious as it might have been. I should, was probably the way to say that. Uh, he he uh, has, uh, every reason to recover and recover quickly. Whether it's by this weekend or not, we'll wait and see, but that's our hope. And that's, that's A. Jamie Graham should participate in practice tomorrow. Uh, we'll wait and see what his condition is and his ability, uh, much like Jeff Baca. You know, you don't know how much, but, but his, his role would be in an emergency situation anyway, even if he were to play. And then uh, we'll have to look and see what other uh, solutions we have as we uh, continue to try to figure that problem out. It's possible. Uh, probably, uh, you know, somebody that's currently playing safety. Never know. I, I mean, we, we've got a couple guys in mind, uh, it, but I don't need to name their names until we've had a chance to talk to them. You know, I, I, it's possible. Now, he, he told me he felt very good. Uh, he looked sharp in pregame. Uh, and I didn't notice anything 
in terms of arm strength not there. I just think the, uh, you know, it just meant, went really quickly for him, and, and we missed the, the first pass of the game. Uh, unfortunately, their corner made it a great catch on it. And, and uh, the second thing was a protection gaff that usually he's very salty at. Uh, and and the third one was just a poor decision and poor throw, and uh, it's 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 too bad. But like anybody who plays this position, there are going to be th days like that, and you have to bounce back. You have to have thick skin, and he's certainly proven uh, he can do that. Quarterback that's had as many injury issues as Kevin. Uh, probably not. Probably not a guy that has, has suffered as many unfortunate circumstances as he has. Do you think it is just unfortunate? Do you think there's something to him where he's fairly brittle or just not football friendly? Well, uh, I mean, there's pro two schools of thought. I guess I would prefer to think that he's going to be fine and all the bad luck's behind him uh, rather than that he is destined for this forever. Uh, you know, I just got my fingers crossed that good things are going to start happening for the young man. Well, as I told the team, you know, we're going to have to play uh, more intelligently, you know, in, circ in, in, in uh, situations. And, and third down being the, the, the key. We're going to have to, you know, you've got to know third down and ten, you can't come out of your zone. You, you have to stay in your zone. You can't come and try to make somebody else's play and leave something else available, which has happened all too often uh, early in the season. Uh, and so as you try to impress that upon you, people, you also need to allow for competition if somebody's more reliable than someone else. And uh, that's how you build good football teams. That there's always a, uh, uh, you know, the, I don't, the th word threat probably doesn't fit here, but there's always, they're, they're mindful that someone else wants their job. And so if they don't do it well and don't do it correctly, as the defense calls or the offense calls, someone else can step in and, and uh, do that job and looks forward to that chance. Seems like Daytron Jones had a great fall camp that he was playing at a really high level and a lot of expectations for him. How do you think he's played so far? Has he lived up to those expectations? I think he's pressing. You know, it'd be my, my I think he's trying to make too many sports center plays and rather than just play the defense. Uh, you know, he's a young man that, uh, you know, lo was looking forward to getting back out on the field after having missed his, uh, his sophomore season. Uh, and so... You know, now that he's back in there, and uh, I think now that he's he's ready to uh, hopefully settle in and, and become the player we all expect him to be. Uh, I know this; he's got to get his mind on playing each play rather than trying to make try make just nothing but big plays. I know you shuttle in a lot at defensive line, but did he sit for a considerable amount of time against that? Inoki, uh, there was a point in the game, I think, where he had another offsides penalty where there may have been, like we talked about, a demotion. You've you got to do things the right way if you're going to uh, play. And, uh, you know, while they're tough lessons, uh, I'm sure Dayton understands that's, that's pivotal to our success. You can't be offsides. Is that sports center plays in Nelson had No, I don't think so. I, I don't. I, I, I'm just saying everybody sets goals for themselves individually. And, you know, wide receivers want catches. Quarterbacks want touchdown passes. And if you start thinking about those numbers rather than doing what the offense and defense call for, and you start reading the, the, tab, the, the newspapers as to what others are doing and why am I not, then all of a sudden that, that, can, that can get you to where you're not playing what you need to do. Those numbers usually come as a byproduct because everybody's doing their job. Not necessarily just because you beat an end on a, on a pass rush, but because you kept contained and someone else got pushed and now the guy was forced out to you, you get the sack and, and instead of always having to be the hero on every play. Be the guy who's always in the right place, always uh, doing the right things, always understanding the situation. It's going to be um, unbelievable as how many plays you're going to make.
I just feel like they're eager to get back to work. Uh, school starts this week. I think, uh, you know, there's just energy, and, I, and I'm excited about practice tomorrow. I know you have your quarterback coaching responsibilities, but do you consider involving yourself more in the defense given the struggles you get with that? You know, I, it, it, I think every head coach asks themselves the questions, where am I most productive? And I could go and sit in that defensive meeting and, and listen to what I think are four really good football coaches talk about how they're going to attack and how they're going to fix and all those things. And I'm going to listen and I might offer two or three bits of advice, which I have offered as I look at the tape and so forth. But at the end of the day, I'm going to trust them just as the reason I trusted them to, to give them these opportunities and, and still believe in them and still uh, believe that the good things are on the horizon. Uh, to go and tell them to do things, everything different, I think would be a, the exact wrong thing to do. Uh, I think you have to have faith. We have a system. We, the kids have to embrace the system, which I think they have. Now we just have to play it correctly. And again, not come out of our assignment to try to do someone else's assignment. And when we do that, I think good things are going to happen. And once it starts to happen, it'll be like anything else when you start to get the rhythm of something. Oh, this works. And it'll get faster and faster and faster, and I think we'll be where we need to be. That's the way I look at the future, and I'm excited about it. There was some concern over spreading Jeff too thin with three special teams. Do you just have think he did in that? Well, what was it, 51 and 52? <laughs> I'd say he did really well. Uh, now, had you been to practice when I was actually going to try to move him to the place kicker when Kip Smith was struggling, you would have said, <laughs> maybe he uh, maybe isn't place kicker because there were some balls that were hardly getting airborne. Uh, I was asked, uh, on, I think on the conference call last night, uh, you know, did I expect him to do well? And, you know, Jeff Locke has proven that he can rise up in big games and make plays when you need him to make plays. And so my expectation for him, even though he missed the two kicks that uh, we do in the pregame, right before we go in at halftime, uh, my expectation was he, he's got big enough shoulders to let that go, and he'll go out there and stripe it. And uh, lo and behold, he did. But I still look forward to having Kip get back and continue to be the kicker that we recruited him to be and hopefully uh, get Jeff to focus on the two jobs that he had. We'll see if Kip's available this week. Tyler's going to remain on the team. Yep, and uh, help us uh, as you know. Joe Roberts is down, so we've got now some. Rather than catching balls off of the jugs, we can catch balls off live kicking. And who knows? Maybe Tyler will get a chance here before long. <laughs> I don't know who took that job. I we'll have to check. Jorge will have that information for you. Okay, come. Kip comes back and is consistent. Like all, all jobs, we want consistency. Uh, and, and, uh, but I, I expect Kip to come back when he's healthy and be consistent as he was starting to become uh, as recently as the San Jose State game. <coughs> well, you know, they're, they're a team that's not started well, kind of like us. And, and so they're going to have a, you know, an unbelievable energy playing in front of their home crowd this weekend. And we have to match that and, and try to surpass it, if you will. We played a, a great game against them last year, decided on the last play of the game. Uh, we had a game that went down to the last minute the year before. So these have been great games over the last couple of years. We have the utmost respect for their program and for Coach Riley and his staff. And we just know that it's going to be a, uh, a, a very tough environment. But we've won that if we're going to be who we want to be, we've got to be able to win on the road in the Pac-12. Everybody good? All right, well, thank you.